telling him the alternative for not, for not obeying. He told him the alternative for not obeying. He said, you will surely die. Hmm. Now, God gave a physical representation of the choice, and then God spoke, spoke it. God gave a physical representation of the choice, and then he spoke it. Hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's very important because we are so physical, once we see the physical, we think we have a choice. Do you understand that? Once we see the physical, we think we have a choice. But hmm. <laughs> well, the choice never came until God spoke it. Yeah. Let me give you another example. Make sure you, you, this, this comes home. The apostles are on the, on, on the sea, and, and, and the waves are boisterous, and they see what they think is a ghost, a spirit walking on the water. And they're not sure. The voice speaks, oh, it's me. So Peter figures, hey, I, I'm not a test of spirit. If that be you, bid me come. And Jesus said, come. At that moment, Peter had a choice. Hmm. Stay in the boat or walk on water. The choice wasn't there before. Very, make sure you understand. The choice didn't exist before. If he stepped out of the boat, he'd, he'd have gone to the bottom. Because doesn't he can swim anyway. <laughs> <laughs> There was no choice until the word of God said, come. Mm. Then he could make a choice to stay bound to earth or flat out do the impossible. Are you seeing that? Thank you, Lord. Based on the word of God. I'll give you another example. We have the feeding of the thousands. Five loaves of bread, two fish. Physically, that's not going to work. There are 4,000 people. Physically, but God took a physical representation, blessed it, and, and said, He said, divide it among the men. At that point, the impossible was again possible. God spoke it, therefore it was. Your prayers, if they're along with God's will, will happen. Because God's word will accomplish for that which it was sent to do. Mm -hmm. so, so your prayers need to be aligned with God's word. If they are, nothing's impossible to you. Amen. Not even walking on water. Not even distributing five loaves of bread and two fish among thousands. But because we don't wait to have the choice, then our prayers aren't working. Our prayers aren't working. Now, let's, stay, let's stay, come back to the garden here. Notice, God made no mention of the good tree. Well, he does kind of, look at verse 16, he says, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. So technically he does talk about it. Oh. He says you may freely eat of everything, except. Except. Right, so he doesn't specifically mention the tree of life, but Adam and Eve were free to eat of it. Okay? Now, I want you, I want you, to, I want you to get this. Mm. By disobedience, death came. By obedience, Eternal life would have come eventually. Do you understand? Yeah. So leave the tree of knowledge of good and evil out. They're in the garden, living in the garden. At some point, some point, they would eat of that tree. They would have eaten of the tree of life at some point in that garden. Because God never said anything about it. So it was just another tree as far as they were concerned. Other than the fact it was in the middle of the garden. So at some point, they would have eaten of the tree of life based on obedience. Mm -hmm. At some point, they would have eaten of the tree of life, eternal life, based on obedience. obedience. Mm -hmm. So they had no knowledge of the fact that that was a tree of life. No. They saw another tree. Just another tree. God never drew their attention to it, never said anything. We know it was there. Was he, he told us, he put it there, but that was not made known to them. Because what God was showing was, notice, so, so life is concealed. Death is made obvious, life is concealed. Mm -mm -mm. Now in Christ, what, what do we have? The opposite. He made life obvious. <coughs> and trying to get you to conceal death. Because in Hades, warning you against death, 
When you get to Christ, he says, choose life. Uh -huh. I don't want to say it's the same, though. Oh, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. It really is. I mean, just because I want to look at it. The key thing is, obedience brought life. Right. Obedience brought life. But that's what I mean. I think with, for Christ, death was made obvious, like in his death. Yeah. You know? But life was still concealed because they couldn't, all of them didn't have eyes to see. All right. But, but here's the other thing. What is life? Remember, we, we talked earlier, we said... You know, we keep thinking life has something to do with time. Eternal life has nothing to do with time. No. Because time is, is a physical entity only. Time is a physical dimension only. So God wanted me to choose something that was out of this world. Except I chose something that was of the world. The knowledge of good and evil didn't reside in God, and the knowledge of good and evil resided in the world. <laughs> the knowledge of good and evil resided in the world. Now, again, more, more uh, the Lord reuses some examples. Think about it. We have the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then God gives them the same thing spiritually, because mm -hmm. he speaks what is evil mm -hmm. and tells them, choose what is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? At a physical representation. 